Hey guys, welcome to my fabulous world. It's another day, another opportunity to connect with you. Really, really good on this youth month. And today I'm talking to one of the youth leaders at Piwe and he will tell us more about himself. And um, whilst you're waiting for me to reveal to you at Piwe, do me a favor, just click subscribe. And here's the thing, tell your neighbors, your parents, your cousins, and your people all around tell them to subscribe we are on a mission to reach a hundred thousand by the end of this year and whilst you're at that click notifications so that you know when an episode is up and click like write comments i'm sure you know that when i have time i respond to your comments apiwe how are you Ha, ah, i'm good prof i'm good very I'm good, I'm good. so yeah. good to see you so good to meet you in fact <laughs> no no same same year same year <laughs> i've been waiting to see you yes. i haven't i didn't say your surname uh, but of course, it's because I'm, I was thinking whilst I'm saying mm. uh, Apiwe, people are thinking which Apiwe? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't want to say Apiwe. I didn't know whether to say Apiwe, the former president of the <laughs> SRC events, or to say the current president of the SRC. I hate things like the suspended. Oh, you know what I mean. I hate those. Okay, kind of no, things. no, no, no. So, so introduce yourself. Okay, I think I'm Apiwe Mnyamana. Uh, the, the current SRC president is suspended and charged, but I'm still the current up until my term ends or yeah. up until students says, I feel we don't want you anymore. So, uh. yeah, I'm still the president. Okay, you were voted in. I was voted in by the students. So only the students or only me if I voluntarily resign and say, now yeah. I'm tired. Yeah, those are the only conditions where I would cease to be SRC president. Fantastic. But I'm a vetsy, so I do know that there's a war where the names of the SRC presidents go up. Yes. Um, will your name be there? Of course, of course, okay. it will be there. Okay. Yes. So are you saying Mkrebo's name is there? I haven't gone to check. Sister. Yeah, yeah. We'll go after after here. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll go after here. We'll go after here, yeah. Mkrebo's name is there and Great. my name will be there. Fantastic, yes. fantastic. So you've had quite a journey. Of course, many people do not know that you actually a graduate. Yes. You you are a vet graduate, you have your bachelor's degree and you are studying towards your postgraduate degree. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, okay. I'm I'm a graduate, I'm a triple major graduate, I think in yeah. anthropology, IR and politics and currently And triple major is important because Yeah, it is very important. For those who don't know, triple ma major means that you are hardcore, big deal because <laughs> you didn't take the easy route. Yeah. yeah. With with the graduate part, I think I I think I think I'm someone who has love. You know, I cannot I cannot decide. So when I was doing my final year, I was supposed to choose two majors, but I loved all of the modules. So I was like, let me just take the whole package. Yeah, it, it was tough because yeah. you know double major is eight modules, and for me last year I was running for SRC mm. and I had to do twelve modules. Wow. So yeah, academically it's, it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and it's important to say mm. that because there are people who have a perception that students who go into student leadership or student activism are students who are struggling academically. Uh, and some of us have been at pains to say, actually, most of the time they're the smarter students and they say, ah, no, no, they're the humanities mm -hmm. students. And I always say, you know, the reason why many of the humanities students mm. go into to ex student activism is because they get taught about these, poly these, uh, these theories, they read mm. about them, and then they think, now, why is the world uh, this way? Yeah. If our uh, professors, tell us it should be this way in our readings and they critique things yeah i think it's, it's one thing that happens you know when i enrolled at vids i mm. think i'm i love more maths i think i followed uh -huh. you because of maths in uh -huh. high school i did i didn't do anything with humanities i did maths physics really? and i passed it very well when i enrolled here wow. 2019 i think when i signed for membership when i joined political organization it was Mtrevo Lamin, who actually then gave me the page to say, come mm. and sign. I loved Vets because of political activism, but I used to hate everything with politics. Mm. I think it was 2011, mm -hmm. when I, not 2011, I was doing grade 11, 2017. Okay. I was with my, my, my dad, we are just speaking, I was like, no, I don't like politics, I'm not interested in politics. I was like, uh. chief, the couch you are sitting on yeah. is politics, <laughs> the TV you are watching is politics. Uh. If you don't partake in politics, people will, will decide on your behalf. Uh. So I enrolled for mathematics of, I wanted to be an actual scientist, ah. yes. So you did 2017? In 2018, I completed my metric. Okay. So 2019, okay. I applied to Vets. I think I, M m many institutions, I mm. think, I applied. First choice was actuarial science. Wow. Second choice was mathematics of finance mm -hmm. here at Vets. And third choice, I think it was mining engineering. Really? Yes. 
So I've been the science person. And then for, did you register for, for, for that? Then I could not meet the requirements for actual because I yes. did all sevens and all I had six and sevens. Yeah. So I just, I did mathematics of finance. Uh-huh. Ah, it was tough. Uh-huh. It was tough. It was tough. I think mid-year I just lost interest uh-huh. and yeah, uh, instead of me reading your Thomas calculus, all those yeah. things, I would just read your Steve Bicos and everything. I was like, <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> I think, so, I knew June, <laughs> June, around June 2019, yeah. I went to enrollment at VET. I told them I want to change. I want to wow. do politics. And like, it is a big shift from science to uh, politics. Yeah. Why don't you try economics? And I was like, wow. guys, I don't see myself here. I'm not happy. Wow. I'm not happy. Yeah, I loved astronomy, which yeah. I passed. It's one module yeah. which I passed. Mm-hmm. Applied mathematics, astronomy, mm-hmm. and that's when I came to to the humanities department. And yeah, I did the triple major. Hence, I was able to cope with triple major because mm-hmm. I know the yes. pressure from the sciences. Mm-hmm. But, but that's interesting. So mm-hmm. you you had registered for uh, ma- mathematics of finance, finance. Yes. And you got started your first year you spent time reading politics instead mm. of focusing on your math <laughs> <Yes>. and, <laughs> and you passed a few co- modules and yes. decided mid, mid semester you knew that you didn't june. want to do it june. By june before before my june exams before your june yeah exam. i knew that I, i'm not cut out for this i don't think not because it, was, it didn't make sense to me at the yeah. time not because yeah. i didn't have the capability maybe if if i if i if i were to go yeah. back but i don't think and <laughs> now i'm fit i think i enjoy politics and everything even this day i wanted to do something in data sciences but yeah, yeah i was advised no finish your anthro your anthropology okay. then maybe consider an ma in e-science which okay. is the route which i want to take because i miss i miss the calculations now yes. yeah i really i think they are much easier than theory <laughs> <laughs> they are much better than writing an essay. Yeah, it's better <laughs> <laughs> but anyway one day mm. we'll i'll take you to lunch and we'll talk about the the uh, the politics of mathematics because it's not that a political yeah, yeah everything oh um the, everything is political just like you see the chair but the mm. chair has got mathematics as well <laughs> now now you get elected to being president of mm. the src and 2023 is your year in leadership as president. Mm. Tell us about that journey. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 2022, you know, elections happen second semester. Yeah. Yeah. I want you know the board which you were speaking about, that mm. board of all presidents and yes. everything. Yeah. When I joined politics, we, we, we hold our meetings there. So I, I saw those names, Mtebot Lamin, Moses Kakani, Floyd Chibambo, and mm. I had that feeling with man. One day I need to be up there. Yeah. Just I had that feeling, and yeah, it was a tough journey. It was mm. a tough journey running for politics, especially things a top position like president. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you have to convince people. At some point, I was like, God, if you want me to be president, I I, I just believed. I I prayed for it actually. But but you ran first for I ran for SRC, SRC first and, and then got yeah. Elected. But under under what? Under uh, the PYA. PYA. I mean, as you know, I I. <laughs> I, I prefer the politically aligned SRCs. I really think we need clarity. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean that's I'm waiting for someone to challenge me on that. No, I think I, I also prefer those yeah. ones because there is continuity and things like that. Yeah. Rather than I see independent, I don't like uh, okay independent candidates. I have nothing against them. Yeah, but, but they should they, be a majority. Yeah, they should. I think with politically aligned, it's better because there is. There is the, you can track the record. Yeah. The PIA has been in power, I think, in Vets for the past three years. Maybe they've lost once. Well, when I was here, they were <laughs> always... <laughs> yeah, they lost once in 2018. Yeah. And I was like, okay, there is track record. Some some policies to change in Senate, it yeah. takes maybe three or four years. Yeah. So the first time when you enter, they will maybe propose and there is continuity. Hence, mm-hmm. I ran under the PIA for continuity's sake. And yeah, I'm okay. politically aligned with the PIA. I didn't run f- to become president. The PIA decided to say, no, <laughs> we are making you president and the okay. PIA can decide that we don't want you anymore yeah. <laughs> I'm not attached to the position okay. I was elected by the by the students and the PIA said you must okay. be the president so the PIA is the majority in yes. The SSRC. yes it is the okay. majority and and what was your vision when you took office okay. as president the vision was one thing which I've realized uh, when I came to VATES the fees must fall and everything it was because of of activism I think mm-hmm. VATES I, I like VATES because we usually say we we are the as vets, you know, when we break, you know, vets like to break. I don't know why. <laughs> we should to say we are the SRC of the country, thing like that. We are we are in the privileged I position. He was the SRC of the country. No, 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 no. no, it's it's vets. <laughs> okay, it's vets. So. It's vets. That's why I believe. I think mostly because 
of maybe of the media attention i think okay. because we are close to all the studios so if we have an issue here at vets mm. we easily catch traction because uh. of the media attention so when i went to politics to so say i want to use the the privilege because we're at the point of privilege even though there are there are many challenges which we are still gonna unfold but can we use the privilege of being vets src to to tell the country or to try and advocate for for better policies because there are students in TUT, there are students in UL, it's very hard. Mm. They can protest maybe for, for an entire year, but mm. don't, <laughs> don't get the headlines. Yeah. So now we are at VETS, how can we use the media attention, the vision? Let's use the media attention to try and help. And one thing, it was about reviving student activism. Okay. One, that was the main one, mm. to revive student activism. Mm. Because I've seen that there is a deliberate attempt that's my view to to kill student activism in in south africa as a whole mm. i think if you if you check the uprisings which have happened in the entire world actually the revolution especially the arab spring mm. it was began by by students mm. so when you are a student in campuses like a, any campus especially but it vets uct up your historical colonial universities then you you have I think maybe the, the privilege of, of knowledge because you get conscientized mm. and mm. then you are at a better better place in society to, to raise some issues because you, you have, you have studied some of these things. So VETS makes you conscious. Universities, not VETS alone. Mm. They make you conscious and you must then use that consciousness to, to, to teach other people and to advocate for s such other things. So that was the main thing. Let's build student activism because mm. there is deliberate. Hence and why? Why is there deliberate? When you, st why do you think there's the deliberate attempt to kill student activism? I think because there is a fear of what happens, what happened in Fismas Fall. I think mm. the the state on its own and universities, there is some PTSD, and they try by any means necessary to see if there is any uprising or if there is something. If you don't speak what they want, mm. then let's try and silence as more as as much as we can. I think we, we spoke about running for SRC you run as an independent candidate you mm. cannot run as <laughs> as a political party we do align as political parties uh -huh. to say we are running under this band mm -hmm. but when you enter the ballot you don't you don't enter as <laughs> uh -huh. as pure a you don't okay. enter as eff as daso mm. but you enter as a pure Myanmar. Yes. so yes. and it's one of the issues which we we have yet vets and uct and that thing i see it, it is deliberate to to kill activism mm. because let's say when you enter as pure a PYA place you there. If maybe you do not maybe follow the maybe what the PYA wants you to do to say okay, they say we are fighting for a pass, a 24-hour pass, and you just do your own thing because you know when people are there, they're in power, they just they do their own thing. Mm -hmm. It's easy to recall a president when you enter as a political associate to say, Api, we are no longer serving the interest mm -hmm. of the party. We are now doing your own things. Mm -hmm. So let's pull you back. Mm -hmm. And you have a voice because it's, it's a collective thing. It's a part. But then when you enter as an individual, <laughs> mm -hmm. you enter there, maybe Api, you enter in council meeting. It's, a, it's your first council meeting. You don't know <laughs> anything there and people yes. council members they are, they've been there for four years mm -hmm. when we are there just for four meetings yeah. and there is a few things which you can change mm -hmm. vote for fee increment for example SRC we know we'll always vote no <laughs> but mm -hmm. numerically <laughs> you don't you don't have the numbers you mm -hmm. can say no but when 90% say yes then it passes mm -hmm. so I've seen that if let's try to revive student activism let's try to to conscientize our youth that we are uh, the youth of today i think the issue we we are not interested in politics i don't know why but but it's interesting that you say that because i i always argue that mm. before the uh, rose must fall protest mm. um there was a big talk about by political analysts who mm. said our uh, youth is apathetic they're not interested and this is a problem and boom roads must fall happened and it was huge and and in fact it gave momentum to to, to, to fees must fall. fall of course there were other things uh, mm. like you know check villain at uct and so mm. on but but i always worry when people say youth are not are not interested because mm. i actually think they're interested the issue is what are they interested in okay. and so you you talk about youth activism um in the same way synonymously with student activism are they the same thing youth activism and student, student activism. activism 
uh, I think I think that's the same thing. Probably maybe you, you can argue and say youth activism, but uh, when you are young, mm. you are a student, probably. You are a student, yeah. maybe a student in a TVET. Activism is activism. That's how mm. I, <laughs> I see it. And when I'm saying uh, stu- like young people are not interested in politics, not mm. because it, they do not want to be interested in politics. Mm. I think uh, student activist, I think I, I speak from experience. Mm. <laughs> it's one thing which you once spoke about. Student activism is being criminalized. You are mm. just, you are just mm. they might you want to make you just run away. Mm. See, for, for example, my churches, I have 16 churches for the protest. <laughs> wow. So 16 churches, I've been told that uh, I must not access campus. I was told I must not access campus. Uh, I'm staying in a different res. My bazaar pays f- for me to go and stay at West Junction. Mm. But one of the conditions they said, for you to come back, you cannot go back to Junction. You must go to a different res. And mm. I had to ask, what was the reason for that? There is no logical reason for, for me to go to stay in a different res. Mm. But I, underst- and I, I understood it from, from a political view to say that trying to isolate me from so that I, I go there, I stay alone, and just to make your life to be difficult, so that even the next upcoming leader will say, if you dare try maybe to protest or try to raise some issues, you will be an uh, Apuem Yaman, you will be maybe um, devil, I mean, things like that. Mm-hmm. It's ju- they're just making an example out of me to try and just to kill activism, to say, mm-hmm. don't you don't you dare do mm-hmm. this. You've seen what we've done to Apuem Yaman. We have charged, he thought he was strong. We have charged him with 16 charges. We took him out of junction. He missed half of the semester, half, half of the semester. So this thing is not worth it. Hence, students, it's fear. They're trying to build in fear to students. And some students will be like, I, I can't go to protest. I can't do this. Even student leaders, that, that fear is one thing which <laughs> the establishment of the system does when, when you try to raise issues. Let, let's focus more on that. At the end, maybe I might come back to the student activism, youth activism. Yes. But the 16 charges, what are they? <laughs> and are you, maybe before you do that, are you back? Uh, uh, does it mean you you are studying? You just been moved from one rest to the other? Mm. Are you you know is your academic um, agenda mm. continuing? Okay, yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long story. Let me see where, where do I begin with that? Yeah. With the with the churches, uh, sixteen churches. Most of them they they have they have, they have no they have no grounds. <laughs> they have no grounds. You are, you are just charged in context. You are saying you did this where university property was broken, things like that, and. Some of the churches, there is no time. There is nothing. Mm. I have the file over there. Oh. <laughs> I brought it if you want. To, like, and then in one of the hearing, I think last week I attended a three three day hearing. Mm. The last, yeah, I, t- I just attended for two days. The final day, yeah, I think the chairperson said uh, she was sick. They could not okay. pr- continue with 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 the hearing, which I I, o- I also view it as, polit- as political. It's just mm. to delay everything. So those sixteen churches. They are there. They really don't make sense. Some of the churches, there is no time attached to it. They really, really, it was something to, to scare because we, we took it to the lawyers. I think we took it to the lawyers. We read the churches and mm. it's it's a bad word to use, but it's, 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 they're just frivolous and malicious. Okay. I, I wanted to say nonsense or rubbish, yeah. but yeah, but it's, yeah, those are the churches. Mm. So, so, so. Are there those that you look at and you say this is legit? I want to answer for it. We, we are prepared to answer because okay. we are prepared to answer. We we saw the churches as as a political scare mm-hmm. because of the protest and everything. Because we were charged, I think our church by ENS is something which is mm-hmm. very strange and it's very worrying because when it's ENS, you know ENS is one of the big five and when I received the charge sheet and everything, they delivered it with, with the file to say ENS, Africa's largest law firm. And I was like, why is the institution spending so much money on ENS? Because they are paying advocates. I think one of my, in my hearing, there is a senior counsel who's attending and it's ENS. They're not even using vets, legal staff to, to prosecute me. Mm-hmm. They've outsourced ENS and advocates are expensive. They're very expensive. So why does the institution pay so much money <laughs> to, to purge me? I, I, Mm. They, they should maybe redirect the funds. The, the students who are still struggling right now as you're speaking, mm. students are being evicted. But why is the focus on me so much? And 
by by God's doing, I, I have maybe the legal backing of your advocate Dalimpo, Fuli Rato Moela, and good Samaritans like your Moses Kakan, they come and say, President, I see if it is doing this and this. Mm -hmm. We are here to assist. So, so I wanted, I mean, having been VC, I do know that it would be problematic to use <laughs> university staff to run any uh, uh, yeah, yeah. disciplinary hearing yes. like this. Because um, if I were VC and we have appointed someone from inside mm. and the president of the SRC says, well, I don't trust them, they're biased. I would say, of course, they've got a case. I mean, you know, you should get someone from outside. I don't want to talk for the university, but I can, I can imagine as to who they should have taken. I don't want to get in there, oh. but I can see why they wouldn't take someone from okay. inside. Maybe just to answer mm. that question and to be more clear, mm. when we attended those hearings, because one thing we, we, we opted for, for a mediation with, mm. with someone before we even attended the, the churches, because mm. we told them, guys, there is no way that I'm charged by the university mm. for a university protest, and I've been told that I bring the name of the university into this dispute, mm. and we use internal university like legal services. Mm. That's clear business. Yeah. We told yeah. them, let's have mediation, yeah. and the university agreed, no, let's have mediation, let's bring someone who's external mm. for the mediation. And through, we, we did try to have our own people, which we were cut, because we said we need Advocate Moses Kakane, some people whom we, maybe we trust that mm -hmm. won't be biased. But then there was a mediator. Uh, I I forgot the name the name of the mediator, mm -hmm. but it was a well trusted mediator by the university. The university yeah it appointed the the mediator. We attended mediation session. I think for three mediation sessions. What what transpired on those mediation? The first mediation session I think it was we have been threatened there as leaders by, by university management. We, the, the delegation, it was a quite strong delegation. We, we had the, the vice chancellor, DVCs, the dean, everyone was there and lawyers from ENS and us as an SRC were there. But as the mediation, what will agree on the mediation will not transpire to reality. Mm -hmm. So we, as, as students, we're even losing hope as leaders in this mediation. Because throughout the mediations, we're even told that for you to come back, you must, you must, any media statement that you release must be sent through Vets University. Uh, when you ask me up here, you've been quiet. It's not as because, an SRC, as, an SRC, <laughs> as, an SRC, as an individual, a tweet on Twitter, I must send it to Vets Communication to say, please approve this tweet before I tweet anything, any statement. Those were sure. what things we were discussing in the mediation and those were things were very illegal but we're like okay guys we'll agree because we don't want to seem as we are these hooligans who do not want to reason i don't agree on this but on principle let's continue i will i will agree i won't say anything it's fine happy way if you want to graduate on july i missed i think march graduations i was supposed oh. to graduate Mm -hmm. I've I've done my undergrad. I have certificate of good conduct. There's nothing against me. There's if you want to graduate, then you must plead guilty. You must resign from president if you want oh. to graduate. And like, but this is a mediation. which is to listen to both parties. Sure. Those were the conditions I was told. And yeah. I had to go back and explain to my parent and say I'm the first one to ever graduate oh. at home to say okay. My old lady, this is what you are facing. And I know you want the graduation so bad, but I've graduated, I've completed my degree. You don't owe the university. <laughs> so the, it's fine. You don't owe the university. I don't owe the university. They, Do you have your degree now, your certificate? <laughs> I don't have it, I just have my transcript. Sure. I have my transcript which I can download, just say certificate of good conduct. I've checked on the July graduation. I'm not on the list, I don't know why. So I just accepted, okay, if that they said no, it's because of the case. If you have a legal case pending, you cannot graduate. And I was like, guys, on my entire undergrad, I've not been charged with anything. I have a certificate of good conduct. Allow me to graduate. If I'm found guilty of the charges, it's fine. They will be put under my honors degree to say, uh, during his honors tenure, he, he then got charged with 16 charges and he was found guilty. It's fine. Mm, mm, but mm. allow me to graduate and they've used something as graduation the university used something as 
so so sensitive as graduation to say I have, no i have to ask you now that i have invited you mm. here and i i i mean i innocently invited you uh, am i making your life more difficult mm. with this interview no actually to be <laughs> to be honest with you yeah. uh i i even think for the mediation process i was mm. not allowed to to take the mediation up until the mediation collapsed Mm. And yeah, we advise by us. No, there is nothing to hide. Speak okay. out. But I've been, I've been waiting for, for, maybe for a correct platform mm. to speak out. I've, I've been praying for this interview. Mm. <laughs> if maybe you, you don't know. So when I got your text, it was an answered prayer, yeah. because the issue with such things, maybe going to media interviews, television, I, I do it. Yeah, if I'm invited, and I feel mm. like I have to go and and explain. I don't mind doing that, but the issue with media and everything, they can easily, you can say this on the media interview, when you read the article, it's something completely different, they can twist everything. Yeah. So I was like, let me wait a bit for, for with media, if I can find a proper po podcast to just share everything, mm. then I will share everything. So I've been waiting for, for, for the opportunity. <laughs> so we are not... I mean, I, I have to say, I, I invited you because mm. I thought... You know, we saw the protest, mm. we heard that you are suspended, we've never heard from you. I was like, is he still alive? <laughs> Where is he? You know, this is South Africa, people disappear, you don't know. So I, I had to fi find you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And of course, uh, with the, I, I, I'm glad that we finally met. <laughs> I thought we'll get you before now. So the the hearings have been going on. Last week we were supposed to meet, but you, were, you said we were in a hearing. You still have more hearings happening or is, is this a stalemate? I mean, is there progress? So, what happened with the protests, I think, maybe if I can yeah. explain. We had the SRC because I was not allowed on campus. We said, guys, let's, because I've been trying to reach out even to the dean and say what you are calling for is a conversation with mm -hmm. the VC. You want to meet the VC. As a president, I used to have the one-on-ones -on with the VC, yeah. but now, when I report back to the team, it's like, you know, president, you know, you're not doing the job. I said, guys, I will no longer meet the VC alone. We are the SRC. Every meeting that I'm going to, I want the entire team. I even made it sure to, to the dean and everyone. Mm. I want the entire team of the SRC to go there and listen to what management is saying and will take a collective decision. Yes, I'm president. There are some mm. decisions which you, you can take alone, but I don't want it to be that way. Because it's not about Apuya Myanmar, mm. it's about the students we represent. Mm. So let's meet with the VC, all of us. No, let's meet, we've met with the dean and the dean will say, some of things they're like, then I don't have the authority to do that. It need mm. maybe cancelled, it need the VC. So, okay, dean, it's, it's, it's not under jurisdiction. Let's have a meeting with the VC. We, we appreciate you can only go this far as a mm. dean, but we feel like we are not doing enough. So let's, let's hear what the VC says. We, I've, I've, the first time I met the VC with the entire SRC team, it was the first day of the mediation, and that was the last time we've ever met with the entire SRC. Mm. So, during the protest, we will say, we want to speak to the VC. So, the that VC mediation, mediation was before prior. the protest? No, it was before, yeah. Okay. No, it was after the protest after and the everything. Protest, okay. So, then we protest on the 1st of March. Mm. The first of the March, first of March, we protest. We get calls, guys. We're not gonna stop the protest. We want to meet with the VC. We need someone who can take the decision. We are tired of being sent from pillar to post. No, speak to this one. No finance. This one. That's what happens, and that thing gets so frustrating. So we need the VC. If the VC needs to come with the CFO and whoever, let's have that meeting. And let's have if thing if you cannot solve this this year, let's maybe have another. Let's agree next year things are gonna be different because what what we are raising now is not something which is new it has been raised ever since maybe the university has existed fees must for generation they've raised the same issues so let's have something let's try to put an end at this thing let's have a scope which we can work this okay this year we can only achieve this but next year promise us in writing mm -hmm. we won't have the same challenges that's okay. what we were looking for okay. but people could not come because no one wants to account at the country when the issue of accountability they, we could, I did not meet the, the vice chancellor. The first time where the vice chancellor agreed to meet, because we heard that the vice chancellor was not around. He was not in the in the in the, in the country. I think it was day three or four of protests, and we're like, 
but the university things are unstable i think you must stop whatever you're doing and meet the src so we are not taking us serious that was the attitude of the src the vc is not taking us serious mm. the vc then sent senior dvcs and everyone but why we, we we then met with them because let, let's hear what they are saying and they they did agree to some of of the demands but the most burning ones <laughs> they did not give us any answer and we said guys we are meeting you because we have to give feedback to students. Protest is not nice. I don't know why society thinks you will like. Protest is not nice. Yeah. Even yeah. post protest, you hear from where a door shut, you will think that's a stand grenade. Mm. You go through those things post protest. Then the VC is not there and you're like, okay, let's meet with these people. Then there is that famous call, which I think maybe I'm, I'm perched for of saying you are going to the VC house. Then there's a call. The VC wants to meet, and we're like, we are al- we are already <laughs> on the way to the house. So if the VC wants to meet, the VC must come and meet the entire students. We've been patient. He must just tell the student the demands. These these are not my demands. as up here in man. Mm-hmm. These are the student demands. Come and address the students. They're already outside your house. We have it is a courtesy visit. We are, we are outside the house. Address the students. They're like no, the VC won't address the students. They're hostile environment let's just meet with the src okay fine we'll meet the vc later the night the vc said no we can't meet under this condition mm. he said we are not meeting anymore eh. and i was like but what more could we do now we, we've tried to push and push then i was saved with the sus- suspension the suspension notice when i was saved after <laughs> the day after it was a Sunday, the day of the VC house, I think it was a Sunday, 6th, maybe 5th of March, then the 6th of March, boom, suspension notice. And when I was served with the suspension notice, I was like, but this is not even communicating this thing. Is I, I saw it as intimidation. I was like, guys, there is no way we are trying to, to meet each other. We are supposed to meet. The VC said we are not meeting today. It's hostile. We are, I'm waiting for a day to meet the VC, the entire SRC boom a suspension notice what's happening and i was like i'm not gonna take that suspension notice serious and when i received the suspension notice i think the premier had said mr Panyaza Lusufi, the protest has been going for so long there must be an intervention we had the premier in our boardroom src boardroom and we we, we called the vc we said premier we've been trying to reach out hmm. please as an external person as the prime of the country. And the premier said, no, I'm not coming here as an ANC chairperson or what, what. I'm here as the premier of mm. the country. This road is very busy. You cannot be causing havoc as students. Mm. Come, let's meet and mediate. And I said, please, we gave the we gave the premier the number of the chief council and the VC. Can we have the chief council and the VC? Let's meet and see. But we, I tried to follow up with the premier and the premier. The meeting did not happen so those were the efforts which we have tried to say we are trying to speak with these people even today if he can call and say come let's sort the issues we are open to Mm. that but now when we are met with hostility when we are met with bouncers when we are met with (laughs) things like lawsuits from ens you see like these people are not prepared to talk Mm. they just want to fight and we that hence we, we we are also fighting so, so what's happening now? There's, there's hearings taking place. Okay. And then study. Okay, okay. okay. What's happening now? The reason of ceasefire. I think I was getting there. Mm. We cease fire so that there can be talks. Okay. The VC said, yes. I cannot speak if there is protest. Yeah. Cease fire, then we'll engage. Yeah. And we've ceased fires and SRC. We say, okay, mm. we will cease fire and allow mediation and the, the mediation was prolonged i think for the entire first block in I the meantime mean, you are suspended you cease fire whilst you are suspended yes i'm outside of you campus the only one who was suspended i think firstly two members of the src mm-hmm. were suspended solami Mbuteles, and lisa okay. as we are speaking now mm. lisa Sbaka is on her hearing is attending a hearing okay. as we are doing this interview okay. now Okay. So two members were suspended before me. Before you. Okay. Uh, the first meeting we had with management, we told them, guys, you are not meeting us in good faith with this suspension. Please expand this thing mm. because the suspensions were for genuine protest call. Mm. And the university said, no, yes, we, we will we will drop the suspension, but mm. it, nothing happened. 
Then comes my suspension. I'm not allowed on campus. I'm not allowed on res. When I was suspended, immediately the doors to my room, they got changed, the locks. I could not access my clothes. I could not access my laptops. The biometrics were, were shut down. I couldn't. When, when I entered campus, I think every security, they had my picture to say, this person you cannot allow. And there were other students, SRC leaders, who were suspended and they were allowed to come to but with me, there was an appeal dispensation. That's how they call it. They were just different sets of rules. They're mm. just different sets of rules for me. I was not allowed. If I could just maybe walk near vets, you will. There maybe there was a video where I was manhandled by five, five people just trying to access Outside the university, sports, trying to campus. access the university. When I would go maybe home, I would be followed by by CPS vets university. I'm like. Why are you wasting so much petrol following me around? You, you, you maybe redirect the funds to what we are calling for. I was followed M M1, M so very far from Vets University, but private security hired by Vets University, even the Vets shuttle was following me. There was a time I was like, we even reported to some traffic officers, guys, I've been followed by these people. And I, I'm going to my own places. I'm nowhere near campus. I'm saying I'm a threat to campus. It's like I've maybe I've burned a building. And I was like, okay, I'm away from your campus. Why are you following me? Hmm. They could not answer. Those, the, 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 the HMPD person had to intervene and said, but guys, even if Apiwe has his own issues at campus, this is a public road. Hmm. There is nowhere that you have to follow this place. That's when they backed off. Okay. So, you are, are you still a student? Are you still <laughs> Are you writing assignments? Are you submitting? What's going on? with that one so with everything six i think seven weeks outside of of school i i was studying because when i i when i was suspended i got a call from a uh, moses moses advocate moses kakan mm. and he said no i know what you're going through i was <laughs> i was detained for four months and i was released i was supposed to write an exam so one thing that will happen now if they cannot maybe falter you politically and nah, nah, they will come after your academics. Mm -hmm. Make sure you submit, make sure you are a student. Uh -huh. Those difficult times when I don't have a laptop, I don't have anything, I had to study, read my books, I had to speak with lectures and say, can I have a prospect? Let me study. Meanwhile, I missed the protest and everything. Mm -hmm. I studied and I submitted my thing. I'm, 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 I'm a student because okay. I knew okay. what they, they will come for it. Even my honors program, I was supposed to finish it this year, but I have to finish it next year because <laughs> of mm. some of some issues. But okay. I'm still a student. I've returned my yeah, the, what I have to write. I've submitted. I'm fine academically. Okay, so you are progressing normally academically. I, I have to extend the program, extend the program because yeah, year. I've I've with with the research I, I've missed the the entire block. There was no way I could recover some of the mm. things. I have to do them next year. But what I could submit, I submitted. Mm. And and. and if you had an opportunity today mm. to address students, well, what would you say to them? I mean, <laughs> this is youth month. Let's let's just, you know, dream. If it were, if it were possible, and you could address fat students, your constituency, the people who yeah. who voted for you, what would you say to them after this experience? After this experience, mm. I would say to students. Aluta continua, kinamfundi kini. The the struggle continue. Mm. No, I will still say no retreat, no surrender. I, I, nothing has changed. And you still remember vividly what you were fighting for. Uh, and yeah, and we are still fighting for what we are fighting. And now it's it's much better because yesterday I had the entire meeting with some some students telling me what the gains of protest are now being reversed. Students mm. are being evicted. So. Things are much more worse than they were in the beginning of the year. Mm. It's the reality now. Mm. So the struggle will still continue and we're still going to fight for, for what we deserve. I believe our our we are fighting for genuine causes. Mm. And yeah, we'll still continue the fight. Okay. And uh, knowing what you know now and being where you are now, if you had a younger brother who was about to start university next year, uh, what would you advise them to do? Mm. If I had a younger brother, I have a, a younger sister. 
Ooh, I should just say sibling. Like younger really sibling. Yeah, now I'm just saying <laughs> like realistic reality yeah. speaking. I would say yeah, focus focus on your studies. We are here at Vets University. One thing I was when I came to Vets, my dream was not to become a SRC president. Mm. It was not a dream when I came to Vets. I came to Vets or you go to university to, to obtain your degree. Mm. To fe- just to get education so that you can get a job maybe build a house for your parents, things like that. So one most important thing, get that degree and just love yourself. That's number one. And get that degree and just continue the work. So if you want, if you want to join activism and everything, join it, but you must not lose focus of why you are here. Mm. You are here for your degree. These other things, you, they are just, by the way, <laughs> something which you inherit on the on the way but the most thing is you must go to university go to college if you want to go to college or tvet but just get the paper and go and work if there is an injustice just raise it out mm. yeah always speak if there's an injustice that's okay. what i would advise okay and 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 i mean i i was speaking to mascolem landu i'm sure you probably know Mastolem yes yes um, the, the episode that I did with him is up on the podcast. Um, I, I watched maybe it's five five seconds before you, you I came here. <laughs> you've got to watch all of it. Yes. Um, but of course, Mastola and I have a long relationship mm. uh, and a different one at that. And I, I said to him that uh, sometimes, sometimes I feel like, you know, having grown up poor myself, mm. I feel like activism is a luxury of the elite. And the elite can be in terms of university students mm. yeah, we are elite in uh, mm. university uh, people with money because you don't have the right lowest level of problems mm. um, and so what if those people at the bottom 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 say to you a pure man we're looking up to you we want you to come and liberate us please forget this thing get this degree and run the country so that we can be free look at us we don't even have food accommodation mm. and so on, you know mm. i think that's what keeps me going is saying mm. as you've said uh, i think that's profound to say activism it's, it's a luxury of the elite uh, being a student activist being an activist doesn't depend on on me becoming a SRC president mm. i think it doesn't depend it's whether i'm a, the term was going to end at the end yeah. of the day and i was not gonna stop being an activist because now I've ceased to become a SRC president. Mm. I'll still continue to, there are, there are different forms of activism. That's what I think I've learned from the entire chain to say, you can be an activist by writing, you can be, an, this, this podcast can be activism mm. on its own. So, yeah, uh, and knowing, coming from a poor background, I think what keeps me going to say, it's not something which I read about. It's not something which uh, I see something which I personally have s- experienced. Mm. I, I, I think I I was born in Eastern Cape. I left Eastern Cape. Uh, there's a town called Pegastop Mzamom. When I was nine months old, you know, mm. I entered. Some people don't believe the story because they say maybe it's a joke. I entered through <laughs> a window of a train. I think because of the stampede, you know, yeah. shosholos are made yeah. the stampede and everything. Yeah. So I was nine months old. They had to open a window so that enter. I came to transpect for better opportunities. When I was nine months, mm. we stayed in Tualedi. It was it was a shack. I think we stayed there up until maybe I was seventeen. So. It's it's a lived reality mm. being poor. It's so it's a lived reality. I know how hard it is, mm. and there are students now. I went to UL. It was hard. There are some students now who who have to sleep with landlords, for them to to be able to get accommodation and to continue with their studies. So when it's it's no longer about me as an individual. Mm. It's about it is bigger than me. Mm. Hence I. No matter how hard it is, I have to continue and we have to finish. One thing which I've, I've learned in life and one thing which I'm trying to teach myself is, is finishing. I think as, as young people, sometimes it's hard to finish. It's, it's really hard to start. It's very easy. Mm. But finishing, hence I'm still holding on. And despite the cases, I'm fighting to say I'll be SRC president up until the 31st of October. That's when my 
term ends, no matter the challenges, no matter, I wear this, this blazer with pride yeah. because there is some young person who's in Lusigi Sigi from Pegasto from Toilet who's looking up and saying, Apiwe did it despite the churches, so I can, I can also do it. So mm. one thing which I've learned, I think studies show out of 10 people who begin school, maybe only two will finish metric, only one will obtain their qualification. So it's hard to finish. And it's something which I've taught myself, no matter how hard it is, yeah. what matters most is finishing. Yeah. And we have to finish. And if I, I'm not a special case, your, your Robert Sobuka that went through this, your Steve Biko, your Moses Kakani, your Mtrebo Damini. There are people who are going through it now, maybe in UCT. There are people who are going through it in TUT. It's, I'm not a special case, mm -hmm. but we have to show the world that despite the challenges, you can still finish. It's not about... I'm still the same Apiwe who was doing the fundraising for vets who went to clean at Hillbrook. I'm still the same person. I even changed. Whenever I feel like... Yeah, down. I just watch my video. Usually, I don't watch myself, even the podcast. I usually, I don't enjoy those things. I don't know. I don't watch my interviews. Mm. But there was a day where I was like, it's tough. This thing is hard. Yeah. And I went, I watched my welcome day video when I was like, and I, there I think I quoted Tabombek when he says, those who finish their course will do so because that as fatigue sets in, they do not convince themselves that the steep is, the incline is too steep or the loneliness impossible to bear and the price itself of the true value. I watch myself saying those words and I'm like, hey chief, <laughs> you have to soldier on. It's not about you. You said these words, so yeah. you have to finish. Yeah. I'm glad that you, you are committed to soldiering on mm. and to finish because that, that that's very important. Um, can you finish on the point of youth activism as, as student activism? Here's the reason I was asking, uh, and it connects to the issue of mm. activism as a as a luxury of the elite. Mm. You and I, having grown poor, knowing all the poverty that we know, um, we go to school, and even amidst the poor, throughout the 12 years of basic education, we emerge mm. as the elite as the advantaged, as the fortunate, mm. because we were smarter, we could do things. There are many who didn't. Um, and if I talked for my, for my case, I mean, I studied during apartheid, that mm. there, was, there were many who, who the system won over them. Yeah. Right. So, now, so I still see myself as elite in that way. The fact that I could catch on, I could withstand the harshness of this mm. South African schooling system. You too. It's not the kind of harshness that every kid can can withstand, and so we are the elite. We so we survive yeah, the, yeah. The, the thing. There are many young people who don't. Who you and I not only survive that, we made it to vets, man. <laughs> it doesn't matter who says what. Yeah. You've got a bloody vets degree. I do too. Yeah, we, we and fought. they can't take it away mm. from you, and you got it by your own steam. You're mm. a, a triple major. You know, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that in itself, I mean, it's a blessing. It's a, you know, it make it, you survived yeah. the harshness of the system, right? There are those who didn't. There are those who you left at high school. There are those who didn't even manage to go mm. to high school. There are those who didn't complete the degree as you did. Um, and they're still young people. They're out there. They are. And, and for me, the difference is the student mm. activism, student activist. Mm. Are, are are advantaged in that way and and my gripe is that they fight for their issues every year year in year out they fight for fees but actually shall i be harsh and say it seems like they don't care what the other youth young people need who don't need fees for university who might not even need TVAT, mm. but they're there and they might need something else. Do we understand the, do, do you see what I mean? So for me, it's the <laughs> difference between this youth who the fight for fees, you know, actually is a problem because maybe it denies them getting mm. access to something else that will help them create a decent life for themselves. 
and others. Mm. Okay, no, I think I, I get your question. Mm. One, one, one thing maybe made made me join Sasco that we usually say. Yeah, you are saying uh, institutions of higher learning are a microcosm of, of, of society. Yeah. So you are right when you say we are we are privileged. I think it's it's one thing I am well aware of it. Mm no matter the challenges but we are much privileged and it's using the privilege that you have to to, to pay it forward yes that, that i think that's what activism is about the issue now it becomes that when we get to vets university where we when we wear these white blazers we we tend to forget that we left someone a gas we left someone who needs this opportunity mm -hmm. it's, it's so sad this year when there was a student, I think, seven distinctions, mm. just completed metric, came to the office with the parent, and the student wanted to do medicine. And you know the challenge was, you know the challenge, it was NPT. Mm. It's from rural KZN. Mm. And we, we tried to say, I called everyone whom I knew, guys, the student has passed very well, but the criteria says NPT. And the student says, I did not know that there is this thing called NPT that people who don't know from your rural case mm. and and they've met everything so activism is not about activity doesn't add at Vets University mm. we must go back to the neighborhood assist people with applying to those programs it's something which I, I do I do we go to because hey that, that's the issue which we face when mm. we, we we forget I think one of the issue we have as as, as, maybe, maybe as a generation of black people is forgetting mm. it's forgetting hence our even our history our our struggle heroes june 16 we even forget why why it's the machine in we're fighting we even forget why tomorrow is june 16 mm. we forget and it's it's something which we are we are trying to fight for and it's one of the reason why 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 i came here mm. for for everything to be documented so that one person might look at it and say he did it. So even when I maybe go astray, na -na, yeah. I will watch this thing and remember yeah. to say, but uh, we are from here. Mm -hmm. we, we are struggling with, with forgetting. So we are privileged from universities, but we must not, let's use the privilege to, to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went to, maybe I use maybe UL a lot. There are some institutions in their bathrooms, there is, there is no toilet paper. I visited a friend. I, I thought, yeah. yeah, I visited a friend recently and I was like, you did not have toilet papers. Like, I might mean, just go to roll a toilet paper yeah. from campus because I'm from vets. Yeah. I know there is toilet paper. And I was yeah. like, Chief, we, we don't have toilet paper. I was like, it didn't make sense. And is, is, there, is that exceptionalism or elitism that makes you think, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it is, it's far much better at vets, to be mm. honest. It's far much better at UCT. It's far much better at UP. Go to those rural institutions. Mm. It's 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 tough. Yeah. It's yeah. very tough. The areas of Asala Guyo, it's ama room. It's just a single bed where you cannot even sleep. It's mm. it's very it's very tough. Mm. They can go seven days or eight days without electricity, mm. and that same student is expected to study, to pass, and to do well. So that I'm lose the buzzer, so that I'm lose the funding from NFSAS. And by As the way, when they complete, <laughs> you are going to complete with them for a job. Yeah. And companies will yeah. say, we are taking vet university when also you early. Yeah. Ah, it is another issue. Yeah. Hence, we are trying to advocate, hey, it is tough. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are really privileged. Yeah. Hey, it's really, really tough. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's levels of disadvantage. Maybe mm. I'm being harsh when I call it privilege. It's level of, it's levels, levels of, of disadvantage. Yeah. That even though you are still advantaged, you are at a much better level my, than someone who's at University of Venda. Yes, and, you are right. You are right. And often when you are in that space, you mm. don't really appreciate the space because you are still disadvantaged. <laughs> um, uh, but then once you stop and look and you you think, wow, the problem is much bigger. That's that's yes. my point exactly. The problem is much bigger, and I want to leave you with this. You know, my my view is we need we need activism more now than ever before so much right and what makes activism on student campuses on, on university campuses even more important is the fact that this is the one place where activism actually should be grown 
nurtured, protected, and it should flourish because actually, if it cannot happen at university campuses, we can forget about activism anywhere because this is the only place where people from different walks of life, from religion, different religions, political, can be in one space, mm -hmm. can debate freely, and can agree to disagree and move on. You sharpen your way of debating. This is where it happens. If we kill it at university campuses, we, we don't have life. We have, have no hope. We don't like. We have no a, hope. So university is about tolerance. Well, I actually, it's about <laughs> knowing that your view is not the only view. Yes. <laughs> and accepting that there will be mm. many other views, and and listening to them, using them to sharpen yours mm. and move on. And and so we we and so we need to grow it and nurture it um, um, uh, rather than wish it away. I don't I don't I I've always said that as a vice chancellor that I don't wish activism away mm. because it will be a sad day if our students are numbed, they are silenced. They, then we can forget about activists in our society. And then we can look forward to a day when we all are oppressed. Mm. And there's no way of speaking up because we killed activism basically. So, so I'm glad you came to speak to me, Apiwe. Um, don't forget the dream. There's a good reason you came here. Um, and as you said, you know, protest is not easy. It's hard. It's mm. difficult. Uh, stand strong and and look here. M mm. My advice is keep looking at those videos when you are strong. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to mm. yourself when you're strong, mm. when you're confident, when you're around people who believe in you, who trust you. You are young and young people make mistakes. If you make a mistake, accept it, move on. We made them. It's we part made of life. Them. It's part of life. <laughs> it's part of so, life. So uh, as long as you grow from them. But I, I look forward to seeing you thrive, lead and move on from here to greater things. God willingly. Thank you very much for, for those words. I think... That, that, that's the plan going forward. It's, we really need activism. It's yeah. one thing that keeps me going. We doesn't mean we have to agree on ideas, yeah. but the university on its side, on, on its nature, it's contest of ideas yes. from mathematics, yeah. from philosophy, everything is contest of ideas. Mm -hmm. So let's let's keep the contest going. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's about tolerance. So it's hence we are pushing so much to, to revive student activism and it's one thing which yeah. I've, I've just dedicated my life. I, I can't leave it away. I try by all means. They say, let me take a break. I do take a break, but it calls me. <laughs> it's part of life. Yes. Thanks very much, Apiwe. Thank you so much for joining us. I wish you an amazing youth day. Well, we're recording the day before youth day, and I hope you have a good youth day tomorrow. I don't know what you'll be doing, but <laughs> I, I hope you watch the podcast tomorrow. Uh, I will. I had a round table with two women vets students and one graduate of UP and, and it was really, really enlightening. I hope everyone listens. But hey, thank you so much for joining me and remember, live your life authentically. It is the only life you have. It doesn't matter who says what. A free life is one that's lived authentically. It's only if you do that that you can do it yourself. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. <laughs>